Captain Gort. I want you to bring your mind back four weeks in time to the night of May the 16th, Branch Bad Airport. Please don't think that this is in any way a cross-examination. It's just you and me putting our heads together to try to find out why this accident took place. Thank you. I'm sure that you and all the pilots who have to fly the Phoenix are just as anxious to determine the truth as the manufacturers, the Atlas Aviation Company, whom I have the honor to represent. Now, Captain, we have heard a good many theories in this inquiry, but what are the facts? The aircraft Phoenix, Victor Fox, under your command, was at Rangibad with 89 passengers, six crew, four tons of freight, a maximum takeoff weight of 170,000 pounds. Now I ask, what happened? Certainly nothing like it has ever happened before. The Phoenixes had been in operation for months before the accident, functioning perfectly. Yet on this single occasion, at a particular airport, in a particular country, under the command of a particular pilot, Captain Gort, an accident occurs. Why? Now, sir, the time is 23.57, Ranch Bad local time. Here is Captain Gort. Beside him, First Officer Lamborn. Captain Gort has already calculated from the Atlas Aviation Company's graph that in these conditions of weight and temperature, the unstick speed, that is the Takeoff speed is 118 knots. Exactly. Thank you, Captain. The captain has signed the load and trim sheet and is satisfied that mechanically everything is just as it should be. Then all six engines are started. Mr. Lamborn obtains permission to taxi, and Captain Gort slowly taxis out to takeoff position on runway 27. Now, Captain, what next? We were clear to take off. Climb on course to 42,000 feet. Great circle to Cairo. And the conditions? Dark. Very hot, spitting with rain. But you could see the boundary lights at the far end of the runway. Yes, but no horizon. Had you any inkling whatever that this was not going to be a normal takeoff? None. Mm -hmm. I see. And then you switched on your landing lights? No, I don't use landing lights for takeoff. It's not required by the regulations. And of course, you always operate strictly according to the book. Of course. Go on, Captain. What then? I turned to Mr. Lamborn and put my thumb up. He put his thumb up, too. And? I opened all six engines to full power, released the brakes, and the aircraft began to move. So, fairly slowly, I take it, because of the high temperature and the fact that you were so heavy. Yes. Then faster until Mr. Lamborn called out 75 knots. Yes. When you pulled back on the control column. That is, when I'd been instructed to lift the nose wheel off the ground. So... The red boundary lights were nearer now. Naturally. Did Mr. Lamborn say anything to you at this point? Yes. He said, God, we're eating the runway. But you had not reached the unstick speed, and that made you concerned. Well, we both knew from the graph calculations that we'd use a lot of runway. And then? He called out 118 knots at last. So, you moved back the control column for the unstick, but Victor Fox remained on the ground. First, yes. Then it rose a few inches above the runway. For a second or two, then it touched down again. But it was too late now to do anything about it except go on. Yes. So you went on trying to get airborne until the red boundary lights went by. Yes. What then? I shouted to Mr. Lamborn. It won't come off. And then? What then? The Phoenix started to bang up and down on rough ground. I slammed the throttles back. 
There was a tremendous bump, a terrible grinding noise, and I felt the port wheel collapse. The aircraft shuddered, then suddenly stopped. Go on, Captain. I pressed all four emergency crash buttons, shouted to abandon aircraft, then went after the passengers' cabin. They were all right. The steward and I got them out of the aircraft. Then I went forward again to see if the crew had all left. Only Mr. Lambert was there, still in his seat. I shouted, for heaven's sake, get out, Alec. I rushed up and shone the torch in his face. Then I saw that he was dead. Captain... Uh... Captain Gort. You've given us a very clear picture, but it doesn't solve the problem, does it? Why did the Phoenix fail to take off? Now, let's go back to the time when you lifted the nose wheel off the ground. The speed is 75 knots. You pull back on the stick. I eased back. I don't use strength to fly an aeroplane. Up and up came the nose. Not as high as that. It was pitch dark. There was no horizon. You had no instrument guidance. And you still say that you know how high you held the nose up? I do. How? I have 19,000 hours experience. In piston engine aircraft, Captain, in the Phoenix 30. Regardless of type, you get a sixth sense. Well, please, allow me to proceed. The wing at this angle is exposed to immense drag, slowing the aircraft down. Yes, but... Perhaps Mr. Lamborn, who was worried... I didn't say ...anticipated that. a fraction of the airspeed of 118 knots. No. Automatically, you pulled back on the stick. Eased back. But the aircraft was so nose high that it couldn't achieve flying speed. But I never got the nose that high. Look, I can show you exactly what happened. Go but on. you're giving the wrong very And will you let go? Can you proceed, Sir Arnold? As far as Captain Gort is concerned, sir, I've finished. We don't, and if you'll kindly move, I'm going inside. Ah, you can't. Council's already made a dreadful fuss about the press going in and out. Now, what I suggest... When does Captain Gort give evidence? He's just given it. You missed it. Sir Arnold made rings around him, if you're interested. Look, uh, why don't we have tea together and talk it over? Talk what over? Well, what I mean is, uh, you want the story, I can give it to you. Of course, there'll be a small charge for inside information. I thought this was a public inquiry. Yes, so it is, but uh, you're talking to an expert. Expert in what? Apart from picking up strange women. Uh, here we are. Two teas, please. Well, I shall always remember our first meeting. Soft lights, sweet music, and discreet self-service. Expert in what? Hmm? Oh, that. Uh, I'm the training captain of the airline. So you train Captain Gort for the Phoenix? Yes, I do. Then you're Captain Dallas. Yes, that's right. Shilling. Oh, thank you. Sugar on the table. Service with a smile. Eh? I'm afraid it's a bit rough. No matter. I want to know about the inquiry. Oh, yes, the inquiry. How's it going? Just as everyone expected. And how's that? They eliminated all possible causes of the accident except one. A fault in the aircraft? No. What then? Well, it's not over, so you mustn't quote me, but I can tell you what they'll say. Pilot error. I don't believe it. My dear girl, you don't know anything about it. Do you? Obviously. It wasn't his fault. It was the aircraft. You're talking nonsense. They got all the pieces, checked every single thing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the aircraft. There must have been. Look, we spent years building up the Phoenix. It cost millions of pounds. And your future's wrapped up in it. Well, I don't see what the hell that's got to do with it. Well, why are you getting so worked up defending old man Gort? Do you know him? He's my father. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were a reporter. I'm a secretary. Thanks for the tea. I didn't break the damn thing. Of course you didn't. Now, don't be silly, Charlotte. You weren't even in court. I'm talking about the model. Between us, we managed to drop it. Costs a lot of money. You're worried about the result, aren't you? Well, why should I? 
did my best to get the aircraft off. Nobody could have done better. Of course not. Don't worry. You'll be flying again soon. I'm just going to wash up these things and then I'm going to bed. Good night, Father. Good night. You'll go too, won't you? Yes, yes, of course. Soon? It's half past eleven. Well, I just want to finish that book you gave me. You finished it yesterday. <laughs> yes, so I did. Father, you're sleeping all right, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes, no trouble about sleeping. It's just... It's Lambo and Charlotte. I dream about him. Nothing to do with the crash or anything like that. Just his face. I think I'll stay up a bit longer. You get a bed. Straighten up. Okay, let's go. How often does Pickering go up? Whenever he can, never misses a chance. He's like a new man since the result of the inquiry. He's a he's a funny bloke. He's very difficult to talk to. Only got one subject, the Phoenix. You get him to talk about that only if you've got plenty of time to spare. <laughs> You know, he still carries the first sketch he ever made of it around in his pocket. I'll go and see if he's finished. Be back in a minute to do the field approach check. Okay. Nigel? We're going in now. You finished? I'll come up front. Everything all right? Fine. Come on, then. That's what I call an aircraft. Enjoyed yourself? I'm sold. Flies right? Flies beaut. It's the height that gets me. First time Birdman Braddock ever felt like a real spaceman. Must make you feel pretty good, Mr. Pickering. Perhaps this will interest you. That's how I first saw the Phoenix. You noticed the wings? Yeah, I always thought wings were uh, such a headache these days. We were lucky. The uh, speed range is what? 100 to um, 600 miles an hour? Just about. Good looking, too. Uh, there's only one thing. What's that? Now, this lift business, there's obviously a lot of lift here, but it's getting less and less all the way down. Now, it must be just about zero at the tip here. Oh, high speed's fine, but surely at low. All that's checked and rechecked a hundred times. Is it? How? How? Yeah. What do you think we've got a wind tunnel for? Well, what's got into him? Hmm? Sorry, I'm late. Oh, hello, Hugh. I ran into our eager beaver of a flight captain. John? <laughs> He's off to Sydney, organizing an extension of the route. Looked as though they had a full load. Building up all the time. Everywhere except Grand Japan. Well, I take it that's not what you called me over for. No, this. You read it? Yes, it's pretty well what we expected, isn't it? Pilot error. And what happens to Gord? Three years loss of seniority and a severe reprimand. You told him? Yes. How did he take it? He said the board could think what it liked. He was satisfied he'd done nothing wrong. Pilot error. Yes, it's tough having to live with a thing like that. What are they going to do with him? Well, that's what I want to see you about. 
The chairman has left it to me to do the sensible thing. Hugh, I've given it a lot of thought. I think we should keep him on the Phoenix fleet. We should what? Subject to a satisfactory check by you. You must be crazy. What, after a crash like that, killing his first officer? If Lambourne had been properly braced, he wouldn't have been killed. But he was killed. Well, that doesn't make Gort any more to blame. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't agree. You know, once, years ago, I undershot a runway and touched down on the grass. The ground was frozen hard and nothing happened. Six months later, somebody else did exactly the same thing when it had been raining and put the aircraft on its back. Result of the inquiry, pilot error. All right, I know there's often only a hairline between being blamed and getting away with it. You were just lucky, that's all. And Gort wasn't. But his mistake was elementary. So elementary, I can't see how he could have made it, can you? The point is, he did make it. And we can't afford to take any chances. Now, look, Hugh, he's got millions of safe miles behind him, more than any two other Phoenix pilots put together, and we're desperately short of jet pilots. All I'm asking is an impartial check. Then, if you're still not satisfied, that's it. All right, if that's what you want, I'll give him a check. He better be bloody good. I'll see if you can find the cone of silence. You try and follow him through on there. This is the best instrument flying test there is. No visual aids, whatever. All he's got to go on is what he can hear. He's got to find his way blind to the cone of silence there, and it's pretty small. It's difficult to get the drift, isn't it? Yes, particularly with this gusty wind. And from where I've started him, I doubt if he'll make it. The ends are getting clearer. Yeah. Well, surely you can hear him. I don't know what he's playing at. He's way off the leg, here now. Why doesn't he do something? I think he's gonna miss it. You'd be surprised how often they think they're in this sector when actually they're flying away from it on this one. When they find they've done something wrong, they're, they're apt to get panicky and start trying to let down without knowing where they are. What do you do then? The only thing I can do, fail them. One thing you learn in this job, beware of pity. Ah, uh, he's turning. Not enough. Wait a minute, the signal's building. It must be closer than I thought. Anyway. Cone of silence. See the press check. All right, that's it. Let down to 1,500 feet. One thing. Yes. I thought you stayed in the end signal a bit too long. I got the drift. I knew where I was. Yes, I grant you that, but the wind was gusty. I didn't want to be blown across into the A sector. Well, that's fair enough. Perhaps you'd like a second opinion. I don't need one. Then tell me where I went wrong, where I failed to follow the book. Oh, come off it. It's one of the best checks I ever did on anyone. Well, then what's the trouble? You're back on the route. Everything's fine. I believe you've met Captain Dallas. Yes, we've met. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. You must come and have a meal with us sometime. Yes, I'd like to. We'll make it soon. Good. Come along, Father. Goodbye, Captain Dallas. Looks a good
good chap. First rate. I'm glad. You know, he's unholy accurate. He had me fooled on the range flying test. Stayed way off the leg to the last possible moment, then let himself be drifted slap into the cone. Pretty impressive. Oh, uh, I told Pickering about it. He wasn't any too pleased. <laughs> He'll get over it. And you don't know Pickering. By the way, he says there won't be an aircraft available for training for another two weeks, so is it all right if I do a trip down the route? Yeah. Yeah, they'll be glad to have you. You want me to wait till Judd gets back? No. No, he's still organizing things in Sydney. Sends me about 500 words on the teleprinter every day. Always the weaver. Yeah. He's a good flight captain. I'll fix a trip sometime next week. Thanks. I'll be at the factory when you want me. All right. Oh, operations. It's Dallas here. Uh, can you tell me when Captain Carter will be available for a flight check? Uh-huh. I see. Thanks. Oh, uh, just a minute. Um, when's Captain Gort due back? Friday. Uh-huh. And, uh, can you tell me his home number? Hello? Hello, Miss Gord? Speaking. Oh, it's Hugh Dallas here. Is your father in? No, uh, I'm afraid my father's away on service. Oh, what bad luck. I, I should have checked. Um, well, uh, knowing he's keen on Shakespeare, I'd book three seats for the old Vic tonight. Uh, perhaps you and I could still go. Tonight? Uh, I'm afraid I've already arranged to go to the vaudeville. Oh, dear. In any case, isn't the old Vic closed for redecoration? What? <laughs> oh, good Lord. Uh, I, I seem to have last week's paper. <laughs> How stupid of me. And how unkind of them to sell you seats for an empty theatre. Yes. Yes, I, I can't understand that. It... Good night. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Mitchell. Mitchell. Hello? Hugh! I've just got in. Long time no see. I thought I'd done something wrong. You, you're awful. <laughs> well, what are you doing tonight, Joyce? I'm supposed to be going out with someone. Yes, with me. So you're being called out unexpectedly for service. Is that what you say? That's what I say. Um, any particular show you'd like to go to? What about the vaudeville? Vaudeville? Oh, uh, you're, you're sure there's nothing else you'd rather see? Fun, Hugh. Remember last time? Mm -hmm. In Rome last summer. I'm sorry, what was that? I was thinking of that evening in Rome. I don't suppose you'll get on the roof much nowadays. Actually, I'm going out quite soon. Is this all right, or would you like to change places? No, really, I can see perfectly. Anything the matter? No, no, I was just thinking it's a bit warm in here. I've noticed it. Good evening. Good evening. Who's that? Are you sure we're in the right theatre? Thank you. Hello, Judd. When did you get back? Yesterday. Crichton brought me. Nice pilot. Nice pair of hands. Route to Sydney all organised? Pretty well. Well, we don't often see you at the factory. Just thought I'd come over and have a gab. How's the new chap, Braddock? Oh, he's pretty good. Doing a trip as first officer. I've just been having a talk with Pickering. He told me what's been happening while I've been away. Oh, yes. Well, our company has always got on pretty well with Atlas Aviation, but Pickering's upset. Yes, I know. About Gort. Well, he's wrong. So now Gort's back on the Phoenix route. Yes, he's done one flight since his check. He's on his second now. What are you worried about? The route's my pigeon. And getting competent pilots for the route is mine. And Manningham's was to get rid of Gort or put him back on piston engine aircraft without any fuss. Was it? The chairman told him to do the sensible thing. Exactly. To out him. But he didn't. You know why? He's had a crash himself and he's an old pal of Gort's. Manningham's not like that. He's the reverse, if anything. Anyhow, I passed Gort, not Manningham. Do you mind if I use my desk? You realize what you've let yourself in for with Gort loose for another five months? Look, Clive, I threw the book at him and he threw it right back at me, word perfect. You can't check everything in a couple of hours. 
How about emergency after an explosive decompression? Did you check him on that? No. Well, take him up again. And when he passes, what then? Tell him he's failed? You seem to think I got something against George personally. I like him. But sometimes these things have to be done. Oh, for heaven's The competition's sake. getting stronger all the time. The Comet and now the American Jets. My only concern is to get younger men. I think George is getting past it. He's a first-rate pilot, but he's too old for the Phoenix. Before the check, I'd have agreed with you, but he was so darn good. I think he's a fine example to the younger ones. We need a man like him. You may be right. I hope you are. Okay, it's all yours. Right, sir. Ah. Hello, what are you doing here? I switched lights with Jennifer Brent. took me out the last time I was here. No? Huh? Clive Judd. That surprised you, didn't it? It surprised me even more if you enjoyed it. Well, Judd's a great organizer, but he's not exactly my idea of a gay evening out. No, mine, really. But it was a great honor, of course. <laughs> but he made that quite clear. <laughs> Yes, I'm enjoying it. Much better than the place we went to last time. Oh, you mean where that waiter tried to pinch your... Ah, oh, no, please, Captain Dennis. <laughs> you must miss being on the route. Oh, I don't know. You miss the flying. It's a bit tiring just circling the airfield doing checks. You did the one on Captain Gore, didn't you? Yes. Wasn't it his daughter at the theatre the other night? Yes. She's very attractive. Oh, do you think so? Don't you? Well, I hardly know her. Was that her husband with her? Good oh, Lord, no, she isn't mad. At least, I don't think she is. That's funny. I got the impression you knew her quite well. And what gave you that idea? Well, when she arrived, you seemed so upset. That's ridiculous. I've only met her once, then only for five minutes. Sorry. It's all right. Now let's go, shall we? To the hotel? Oh, look, Joyce, I'm awfully sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to drop you there. I, I promised to have a drink with the chap. Something I can't very well get out of. It's all right, here. Charlotte, these graphs are out of date. You haven't entered the last electricity or the gas. Oh, dear, I forgot. How can we keep track if you don't enter the readings? Sorry. They're like the graphs we keep for the Phoenix. If we keep check, we know exactly where we are. You can't be too careful. What about this? Is this being too careful? Oh, I got that in Rome. It was ridiculously cheap. Oh, yes. You're very sweet. Well, I'm just going to get ready. I'll be late at the airport. Now, be a good girl and fill in those graphs. So that we can keep track? I'll get along or you'll be late, too. <laughs> Passengers embarking for Calcutta, please go to the main hall to collect their baggage checks and seat reservations. Thank you. Only half full, Mr. Robinson. I do my best for the company, Captain. But the publicity for the Phoenix here in Ranjabad. Hello there. Oh, hello, Mason. Flight plan ready for signature, Captain. Your crew look cooked to a ton. What's the idea? Why aren't you tropical? My first officer left his tropical kid at home. And the book says all the crew have to be dressed alike, so 
Nothing else right. Yes, yes, well, sooner you than me. Thanks. You better go before your navigator catches fire. The bus is ready to take you into Ranjabad, Captain. Oh, thanks. We'll wait till Captain Gork's taken off. Set up. Goodbye and thank you. Thank you, sir. Go on, go on. What's wrong with you? He's not going to get it off. All right, Mr. Robinson. Let's go. Mr. Braddock. Mr. Braddock. Take over. Okay. Looks like a squall. Mm, those brown ones, they're the worst, aren't they? Yes, terrific up currents. Tear your wings over this speed. Brown ones are nearly always small. Ah, oh, but at night. Oh, you get some warning. Turn 10 degrees starboard. Weather boys are good. They weren't always. I got into one of those squalls once. Tried to get under it. Went down to 300 feet. 300? Yes, yeah, but that was 20 years ago. Well, I'm stringing him around now. Otherwise, he'd sell us off for slow service, you know him. Well, homeward bound tomorrow. In a few weeks, the route will be through to Sydney. That'll suit you. <laughs> Australian beer can wait. Besides, I found a bar in London where they sell it. <laughs> well, I'm telling you. Good night. Good night. Go to Beacon. All right, I'll take it. We're cleared to descend from here. Estimating Ranger batting just over the hour. Twenty-seven thousand. Here's the layer cloud Calcutta reported. Yes, I see it. Should be through this stuff by now. It is layer cloud. The outside temperature is nearly zero centigrade. Seatbelt lights. Would you mind fastening your seatbelt, please? Thank you. Twenty-one thousand. Bet more to this than they reckon. Hailstones! Look at the size of them! Through the hail. Got to slow. 
slow down. Wings will be off in a minute. Have to climb. Lose speed quickly. Watch out! Seven. I'd like to suggest that the straps on the crew's oxygen mask should be strengthened. Paragraph eight. The crew's oxygen masks, route maps, charts, books, and some personal equipment have been written off. Pump form 3652A. Yes, Captain. Well, that's all. You have it typed out. I'll read inside it. Passengers got to the hotel? Yes, Captain. Good. Well, tell your maintenance man not to say anything about this broken windscreen. I will, sir. Nobody would believe those hailstones who hadn't seen them. Don't want anybody to get a wrong idea of the Phoenix. Give a dog a bad name, you know. I understand, Captain. Good night. Good night, sir. that I found so trying. I must have traveled 50,000 miles by air, but I've never met conditions like it. Here's our captain. Hello, Captain. I thought you'd all be in bed by now. How are you now, Miss Wright? Well, well, what about you, Sir Henry? Oh, we've been talking like mad, exchanging symptoms, you know. It was a pressurization failure, you say, Captain? That's right, yes. Freak storm. Tremendous hailstones. Yeah, it was very disquieting at the back. My lungs are not what they were, I'm afraid. Well, it wasn't too good for it. <laughs> You use up an awful lot of energy in a storm like that. And at that height, there's not very much oxygen. Captain, we met somewhere before. I know your face. Now, where? Where was it? Well, I've been flying all over the world for quite some time, Mrs. Wright. You know, I, I suppose you'd call that sort of thing a, an airquake, eh? <laughs> <laughs> very good word, sir. Well, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll turn in now. We have a whole day here tomorrow while they check pressurization before I take you on again. Uh, if you still want to come with me. Oh, why, certainly. Why, all the passengers were singing your praises all through dinner. Wait a minute. Captain, you did something terribly brave before. That's right. We haven't met. I've seen your photograph in the papers. No, I, I think you're confusing me with someone else. <laughs> yes. Well, you excuse me now. Uh, hope you all sleep well. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I'm yes. sure it was something here in Ranjiban. Hello. Speaking, yes. Cancellations. But 
Why? What's the matter with them all? Oh, I see. Very well. I'll try to get them onto Air India. Names? Miss Wright? Mr. Drinkwater? Edward? Hello, Hello. Nigel. Go on, then. Sit down. How things at the factory? I came to let you know there's going to be a delay in delivering the Phoenix Mark II. Oh? Why? Modifications, improvements. Such as strengthening the windscreen? What? Oh, that. Yes, I read it. Hail at that height. Can't guard against everything. Still, you have to admit that Gawk put up a very good show. A less experienced man would have tried to bring it on too quickly and torn the wings off. He followed the book exactly. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it proved how strong the Phoenix is. We knew that already. Oh. How long is this delay? Uh, three, four months. Your training program will have to wait, I'm sorry. Oh, talking about training, there's another thing. Dallas. What about him? I don't want to sound inhospitable, but we need the room he's been using. We're very busy over there. On the modification? Yes, among other things. Thank your stars you're not a designer. You get an idea, you work like hell, you involve yourself and thousands of others in a project costing millions. Yes, yes, of course. But this delay is going to ruin our plans, quite apart from the publicity campaign. Sorry, can't help that. We have our difficulties, you know. So do we. Morning. Thank you. Hello, oh, George. Hello. I hear you had a rough trip. Just one of those things. It must have lightened things up for you. Why are the passengers much? Well, they didn't... A few of the older ones, but they were well looked after. Had a good crew. Makes all the difference. Are you busy these days? Yes, I'm moving over here from Atlas. The training schedule's postponed for a while. No aircraft. Oh, then you'll be able to come and have that meal with us one evening. Y yes, of course. Hello. Good evening. Come in. Thank you. I'm afraid Father's not back yet. Won't you sit down? I think that's the most comfortable. Oh, thank you. Let me get you a drink. Would you like gin or sherry? Uh, you got any beer? Yes. I'll give you a hand. No, don't bother. Sit down. I won't be a moment. Been to the theatre much lately? What? Oh, uh, no, not a great deal. Lucky they managed to change the tickets at that short notice. Yes, wasn't it? Uh, let me do that. Quite a mix-up, isn't it? What? All this. Oh, the room. No, I think it's very nice. Souvenirs of 30 years flying. You always bring something back. This time I hear it's a commendation from the company. Yes. Isn't he pleased? He didn't say much about it. Well, there have only ever been about four, you know. Yes, I believe the last time was when an elephant got loose in a freighter. <laughs> anyway, he must be glad to be back on the route. Did you know they'd offered him a ground job? Ground job? What kind of a job? Operations advisor at headquarters. It's more money, I believe. You don't mean to say he's taken it? No, he turned it down. I'm glad, so would I. You don't really mean that. Why not? Well, it was you who wanted him off the Phoenix. Who told you that? You did. The first time we met at the inquiry. Have you forgotten? Oh, look, Charlotte. Well, we've never really had a chance to talk about this. I'm sorry I said so much. To me or to the court? Well, to you, of course. I didn't know you were George's daughter. What I said to the court doesn't really concern you. I think it does. It was your evidence that helped to get Father blamed. Oh, just a minute. Who was it passed him fit to go back on the route? I did. He was reprimanded. That can't be wiped out by a check flight. They only brought in pilot error. Only. It could hardly be worse, could it? Yes, it could have been negligence, which is a damn sight worse. All that pilot error means is that in a, in a certain situation, your father didn't do quite the right thing. That's not true. I know father would always do the right thing. You're not a pilot. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. 
I know this much. You all wanted him blamed. Anything as long as it wasn't your precious phoenix. Oh, now you are talking nonsense. And now you pretend you're glad he turned down the grand job. Listen to me, I'm Charlotte. I'm surprised you can come here. Are you? Hello, Hugh. Charlotte been making you feel at home? Yes, completely. Anyway, I'm not kidding, it is Gort. Oh, come on, Mitchell, he's all right. Every time I look at that roster, I pray it won't be Captain Gort. Well, Mr. Minty, Miss Mitchell. He heard you. He didn't. He did, you know. All right, perhaps he didn't. Now, come on, snap out of it. Hello, what's the matter with you? Nothing. Give me a nice lager, please. Hello, George. Well, hello, Jan. Bring it in, will you? I thought this flight was Crichton's. He went sick, so they asked me. They always seem to ask you, don't they? Well, it only meant coming out a couple of days earlier. <laughs> nice to see you anyway. Have a good trip? Very good. Thanks. You must be tired. No more than anyone else after 4,000 miles. <laughs> of course. Been here long? I came yesterday with Bateson. I'm on this route checking business. What's that? Oh, it's a new bee in the official bonnet. Making sure the boys down the line fly according to the book. Well, I didn't know you had any instructional experience. I'm not instructing. I'm just checking. I'll be coming with you tomorrow. Checking me, you mean? <laughs> Don't glare at me, George. There's nothing to it. This business is pure formality for you. We'll have a good yarn together, then you can buy me a drink in Singapore. See you tomorrow. I've got a date. Can I touch that? Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, that's that. You did very well. Mrs. Odie looked rather heavy going to me. She was. What does Mr. Odie do, Clive? His boss of Sind Airways. We may do business with them. But of luck you were on this flight. Three's an awkward number. You've been a great help. I'm glad. I expect the crews take you out quite a bit, huh? Not much. But you have a good time on the route. I mean, you're well looked after, aren't you? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, you ought to be happy, flying on the Phoenix. Well, that rather depends on the captain. I mean in the air. I mean in the air, too. Hmm? Oh, by the way, I'll be coming with you tomorrow. You? Mm-hmm. Oh, I am glad. Oh, as glad as all that. Why? Well, if you come, you'll be able to keep an eye on things. Because Captain Gort happened to have an accident, stewardesses shouldn't jump to conclusions about his flying. I'm sorry. You asked me and I told you. I just have a feeling that whenever Captain Gort's flying, something's going to happen. Then you forget it. It won't. But after a crash like that, how can you be sure? Because he had a very thorough check before coming back on the route. Are you Dallas? Of course. Why not? Just that it must have been difficult for him. Difficult? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Maybe we ought to go. Oh, wait a minute. Why should it be difficult? Well, he couldn't very well fail him. Well, of course he could. What was it to stop him? Captain Gort's daughter. Gort's daughter? What's the tie-up between her and Dallas? I'm not sure exactly. All I know is that we went to the theatre one night. She came and sat behind us and he seemed quite upset. Upset? Well, how do you mean? Well, nervous. Not at all like himself. And then in the interval she came into the bar and he rushed me out before we had time to finish our drinks. I see. Look, Clive, that's between us, isn't it? I expect you're right about Captain Gorter. I'm probably being silly. Not at all. Don't worry about it. Let's have another of these. Hello? Flight plans ready for signing, Captain. This is Captain Gort's flight, not mine. Take it to him. What's the on-stick speed from the graph? Oh, we're pretty heavy, sir. It's 114 knots. Captain Gort's just checked it. Uh, weather's pretty stinking low down, sir, but clear at 9,000. Report that to your captain, Mr. Williams. 114. That's right. Yes, sir. 
George, mind if I do the takeoff? If you want to. I'm doing so much office work, I haven't been getting much practice lately. 35 embarking here, sir. Business is stepping up. Let's wait till we get a full load. Then we really have something to shout about. to Metro, Roger out. That's all very well, but wait until we have a full load. Then we'll have something to shout about. Victor Metro, altimeter one zero zero six millibars, visibility two miles in rain, wind northerly seventeen, runway three three. Runway three three, thank you. You mind if I stay up front to watch the landing? No. Mr. Williams, let Captain Breda have your seat, will you? Runway 33. That's a short part. Yes. Never landed on it before? No. Nope. So wouldn't you prefer the long one? No, too much crosswind. Runway 33 is very short. It's only 1,600 yards. All right for a piston engine aircraft, not long for a Phoenix. With this wind, long enough. Well, you're the captain. Field approach check. Altimeter set. Brakes check. Cabin signs. Relax, dear. Oh, shut up. Run way ahead. You're a bit high, aren't you? The runway's short, don't forget. Watch your speed. Six thousand. Shall I give it eighty percent flat? Not yet. Nice landing. Bit low on the approach there. Low? Surprise me. You're in a hell of a hurry to get those flaps done. Now, uh, George, you were too low. They found this around the port wheel. Looks like we hit the heads coming in. Come in. Huh? I thought you were down the route. In Asia somewhere. I just came in, in Victor Metro. Uh -huh. Back early, aren't you? Yes, for a reason. Do you know I went out to check pilot operation on the route? Oh, I had a memo about it. Well, I checked Bates and he's okay. Then Gort. It's not too good, I'm afraid. Huh? In what way? Just unsatisfactory. Can't you be more specific? He came in too low at Calcutta. He was lucky to get away with it. So you feel he should be suspended, is that it? Oh, well, of course, that's for you to say. I wouldn't want to. Uh, here we go again. Now, he's not due out until a week tomorrow. 
That gives us eight days to sort it out. Dallas has just moved in over here. Let's see what he has to say. Settling in. Well, it's rough and ready, but it's home. Hello. Hello, Hugh. There's been a bit of trouble about George Gort down the route. What happened? Well, nothing's happened yet. But I did a check on him. And found him unsatisfactory, naturally. Right. Well, that's what you wanted, isn't it? Look, Hugh, we're all in this together. George is on the Phoenix with your blessing. Exactly. They're all on the Phoenix with my blessing. You passed him satisfactorily. I still say that he is until it's proved that he's not. Well, apparently, he made a dangerously low approach at Calcutta. Well, who said it was dangerous? If he was using the short runway there, his approach should have been low. He was too low. I was in the cockpit with him and I warned him. I wasn't going to show this to anyone, but you rather forced my hand. Where did this come from? The hedge at Calcutta. They found it round one of the wheels. I uh, see you've been getting in some more flight time. Yeah, yeah. Still as uh, first officer, then. Yes, well, Judd tells me he thinks it's time you took out a Phoenix as captain. How would you like that? <laughs> Good hour. <laughs> of course, I'll have to check you out first, but uh, that should be all right. Yeah. By the way, weren't you on that last trip with Captain Gord? Yeah. Hmm. He uh, hit the hatch at Calcutta, I'm told. Well, a bit more true than that. How do you mean? Were you up front? Yeah. And Judd? Yeah. Well, come on, what happened? Well, Judd wasn't too happy about using the short runway. He tried to make Gort change. That was the first thing. Mm -hmm. uh, then he went on about being too high. Not just telling him either. He put the flaps down before Gort was ready. Well, I mean, it wasn't Gort's fault. But, but I will say this for Judd. When, when he found that stuff on the wheel, he did say, looks like we hit the hedge, so he must have known it was half his fault. I don't know why I was so worried anyway. I mean, Gort's about the best of the lot. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks. I'll let you know about that check. Thanks for it. Look. Hello. Been waiting long. I went to head office this morning. I saw the chairman. Oh, yeah? Among other things, he talked about Gort. What? I told him there's every chance that George will accept that job at headquarters after all. I said I thought he ought to have another check. That's rather for me to decide, isn't it? Is that your suggestion? Oh. The chairman wants it, I don't suppose George will object. I'm not yet convinced that the landing was entirely his fault. I think you did it between them. Gort was doing the handling. Oh, and you were doing the talking. That sounds like Dallas. Oh, and that reminds me, I don't think he should give Gort this new check. I happen to know he's in a rather difficult position there. How? I understand he's involved with Gort's daughter. What nonsense. I don't think he even knows her. I think he does. I mix with the crews and I hear things. And I say this check should be done by someone else. For Dallas's sake, as much as anyone's. Operations. Oh, operations. Do you know where Captain Court is? Yes, sir. Estimating arrival at about three quarters of an hour. Oh? He's not due out until Tuesday. Captain Leyland went six, sir, so they asked Captain Court. Rantibat, Calcutta and back. All oh, right, thank you. Well, he won't be back till the day after tomorrow. I'll try and arrange a check for Monday. A full load, Captain, at last. And four tons of freight, even Captain Judd would now be pleased. Perhaps. You know, you can hardly breathe in here. We're at maximum weight, sir. Going to need a lot of runway. How much? 5,300 feet. Unstick speed, 118 knots. Well, let's see the book. That's right, Mr. Taylor. Thank you, sir. 5,300 feet. That still leaves us 800 feet of runway to play with. Unstick. Yes, exactly 118. 118, Mr. Johnson. If you have the wind, start the flight plan. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. 
It's like the Turkish bath outside, so the takeoff's got to be exactly to the book. Of course, sir. I'm not doubting you, Mr. Johnson. I'm just emphasizing it. Yes, sir. When you call the speeds for lifting the nose wheel off the ground and the unstick, I want the exact readings. Will you sign the load sheet, Captain? Yes. Weight 77,272 kilos. CFG point two feet out of datum. Oh, all right. Good, good. Thank you. Now let's see about the weather. I can't tell you that without the papers. They're on the desk. Oxygen on. Red pumps on. Booster pumps on. Flaps 20%. Clear to take off. Climb on course. Clear to Calcutta for 2,000 feet, sir. Thank you. RPM checks at 10,500 on all four, sir. Fuel flow is okay. Engine pressure and temperature is normal. Take off check completed, sir. All set, Mr. Johnson. All set, sir. Seventy-five knots. One one eight. We're eating the runway. Speed still one one eight. Well, come on. One, come off! Brace yourself, boy! X Vangivan. Deeply regret to inform you. I think, sir, that we are already clear from yesterday's proceedings that the aircraft was properly loaded, the papers were all in order, and the weather conditions do not enter into it. There remain only two possibilities mechanical failure on the part of the aircraft, or human failure on the part of the crew. And you will understand that, for obvious reasons, I am not in a position, as I was last time, to prove categorically that there was no mechanical failure. And now, Mr. Robinson, in your official capacity, you watched many Phoenix takeoffs from Rangibar. I have, yes. And did you notice any peculiarity in Captain Gort's takeoff technique? He seemed to lift the nose wheel off the ground sooner than the others. Yes. And at the end of the run, he appeared to be more tail down. Thank you. And in this particular takeoff, did it seem to you that the same nose high technique was again employed? Yes. Did the aircraft appear to leave the ground? It did not seem to. It carried on to the end of the runway and then. Uh, yes, yes, with the nose still high in the air. Yes. And you could still hear as loud as ever the high whining engine note at full takeoff power. Oh, yes, just the same as usual. Thank you, Mr. Robinson, that is all. Sir Arnold, please proceed. Uh, well, sir, it was my intention at this stage to call Captain Manningham, the fleet superintendent. Unfortunately, he's ill, suffering from a complete breakdown, from which I'm sure we all wish him a speedy recovery. I don't deny that there were certain questions I wanted to put to him, but in the circumstances, I have no option but to call Captain Dallas. Captain Dallas and I know one another, do we not? We do, yes. Now, Captain, on the occasion of our last meeting, uh, you said, if I remember correctly, that the Phoenix is the most technically reliable aircraft you'd ever flown. Is that right? Yes, I did. And I take it that nothing has changed your opinion? 
Basically, no. Uh huh. Then you will agree, I'm sure, that the crash of Victor Mike bears a remarkable resemblance to that of Victor Fox. There are certain similarities. Certain similarities? Both were on the same runway, both were at full load, and both were on a very hot night, and both were piloted by Captain Gort. Now, surely you mean remarkable similarities. However, uh, would you agree that the similarities were such that you would assume a cause common to both accidents? In the case of Victor Mike, I don't think you can assume anything. We just don't know what happened. But we've just heard from Mr. Robinson that Captain Gort, alone among the Phoenix pilots, habitually assumed a nose-high attitude on takeoff. I'm afraid I can't accept that. It's quite impossible to judge from navigation lights, particularly on a wet night. In that yes, case. well, let's go back to the time where, after the first accident, Captain Manningham asked you to check Captain Gort out on the Phoenix. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Now, officially, of course, this had nothing to do with you, but privately, didn't you think that it would be much wiser to take Captain Gort off the Phoenix? I don't see why. If a pilot wants to go on flying and is checked out, it's perfectly satisfactory. <laughs> yes, well, here's your check report, um, 65 items. It appears Captain Gort did very well. Exceptionally well. But however well he did, wasn't there a chance, however slight, that he might make the same sort of mistake again? No, a pilot never makes the same mistake twice. Never? That's a very sweeping statement. It's what I believe to be true. Captain Dallas, how old was Captain Gort? Why, I'm not sure. Would it surprise you to know that he was 51? Yes, it would. He was uh, young for his age, uh, extremely fit. In fact, on one occasion, it was his strength that uttered his safe. Yes, yes, well, after reading this very flattering report, it was plainly or considered an expert opinion that he was safe to go back on the route. Yes, it was. Captain, are you the only instructor on the Phoenix? Yes. So if the necessity arose for a second check on Captain Gort, there would have been no question of it being carried out by anyone but you. No. But if Captain Manningham had asked someone else to do the check, I suppose everyone, including yourself, would have thought that he uh, didn't trust your judgment. Uh, I suppose so, yes. Well, of course, nothing like that entered into it, did it? No, it didn't. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Dallas, that is all. I think they'll blame him again. They can't. They can't. I can't bear it, Hugh. It makes him look such a fool, making the same mistake twice. And he didn't. You know that. They've no right to blame him. It's like washing out all his life, everything he lived for. If he is blamed, then I'm to blame, too. I checked him. I said he was all right. He was all right. And he was right the first time, too. I don't believe he made a mistake. He, he was a wonderful pilot. Everyone said so. He'd never have done anything that wasn't 100% accurate. He had a mania for it. Everything had to be done according to the book. It used to be a family joke games I had when I was a child. He'd take out the instructions and we'd play them, word for word. No variations allowed, ever. They more or less proved it wasn't the phoenix or the weather. It must have been the man. He, he must have done something wrong, perhaps something that wasn't in the book. Why couldn't the book be wrong? That's it. The book was wrong. Don't you see? That's what it was. That can't be. You don't know what you're talking about. All right. I won't say any more now. Hugh, I want to go home alone. Sorry.
Here's your big moment. Yeah. I remember the first one out you got it. Good luck. Thanks. Oh, Captain Bates. Yeah? I want it on the telephone. Oh, thanks. Hey, have a good trip. Yeah. There's something wrong somewhere. Knowing Gort, it doesn't add up. There must have been how many Phoenix takeoffs? What, 10,000? Oh, something like that. But the only two at full load in very high temperatures both resulted in crashes. Both piloted by George. It seems inconceivable. He couldn't have made the same mistake twice. No. Unless it really was getting too much for him. No, he was the steadiest pilot we had. Now, it makes you wonder if the results of the first inquiry were right. But wasn't there something about a ropey landing somewhere recently? I thought it was funny Gort making that kind of rumor. Well, Judd may have had a hand in that. But there was a ropey landing, all right. He hit the hedge at Calcutta. He took this off his wheels when he pulled up. The short runway, I suppose. The short runway? The Kolkata. Yeah, that's why Judd was so steamed up. Well, there's no hedge on that side of Kolkata. There's a fence. You sure? Well, of course I'm sure. I was stuck there for a couple of weeks once for an engine change. Used to walk around the place twice a day. For now, now, just a minute. Let's get this straight. Do you know what you're saying? If this didn't come off the hedge at Calcutta, it must have come... Brangy from... bad. Yeah. Yeah, there's a hedge there, all right. Now, Braddock was on that trip. He told me Judd did the takeoff at Ranjibad. That means he must have hit the head. Taking off? Yeah. You know, this could make a hell of a difference. The thing they got Gort for last time was that he was the only pilot to have trouble taking off. Looks now as if he wasn't. Yeah. And how many near misses have there been? The pilots never report them. You know that. Sometimes we don't even know we've had them. <laughs> you know, Jock, if we're right about this, it could happen again. Your duty crew, aren't you? Yeah. Now, Captain Judd, I won't keep you very much longer. Shortly after Captain Gort returned to the route, a fact of which you did not entirely approve... I didn't say that. Uh, you instituted a system of route checking for pilots on service, and among others, you checked Captain Gort. Yes. And found him, I expect, as Captain Dallas had done, perfectly safe to fly the Phoenix. That's very much a matter of opinion. Yes. Uh, now, since you didn't write a report, I must ask you if anything happened to confirm your belief that picked men, only picked new men, should fly the Phoenix. Well, Captain God did come in a bit low at Calcutta. Does that mean dangerously low? I think his wheels must have brushed the hedge because... Yes, yes. Captain God... Hit the hedge, coming in to land at Calcutta. Now, when you return to England, you ask the company to give Captain Gort another check. That's right. And they agreed? Yes. But before it could take place, Captain Gort had flown out again rather unexpectedly. Yes. Am I right in supposing that Captain Dallas was going to do this new check? Captain Judd, will you please answer my question? Captain Judd, I must insist upon your answering. Not Captain Dallas. No, Captain Bateson. Thank you, Captain Judd. I'm very much obliged. But what are you going to do? I've taken a room. I can't stay here. I'm going to store all these things until I can sell them. I tried to call you here this afternoon. I went to the menu. It's six o'clock, miss. We'll have to come for the rest in the morning. Yes, all right. Uh, good night, miss. Good night, sir. Are you sure there's nothing I can do? No, nothing. There are times when I feel I don't even want to see you. I'm trying to forget. You make it all come back. The moment you're gone, I'm sorry. That's part of what I tried to make you understand about Father. Everything planned to the last detail. But you have made me understand. Poor Father. I never did keep them up to date. Oh, I'll go. That'll be Bateson. I hope you don't mind. I told him I was coming round here. I'd rather not see him. You don't have to. You stay here. 
Hi, John. I've seen all the pilots who are in, seven of them. They were all a bit cagey about it, but five of them admitted they don't fly quite to the book for takeoff. How? Uh, not every time, but always when it's hot and they're really heavy. Seems they keep the nose wheel on the ground longer and unstick later than they said. Five out of seven? Oh, of course, I don't know about the others out in the route. Except Braddock. Yes, you're right. Gort did most of his training. You fly strictly to rule for certain. That's only, uh, 20% who follow the book. Why didn't the others tell me about it? You wait till I have a chance to talk to them. Well, what about you? Me? Oh, well, to tell you the truth, I... Oh, well, when it's hot and we're heavy, I hold it down to the end of the runway, too. Oh, you do, do well, you? Well, I do it by feel. Oh, you know how it is. Uh, instinct, if you like. Yes, well, maybe you're right. Because those who don't are damn lucky they never had maximum weight on a hot night. If it hadn't been Gort, it could have been any of them. The inquiry will have adjourned by now. I'm meeting Judd. I'll be with you in a minute. No. <laughs> Thanks, Patty. Oh, yeah. I got you a beer. Oh, thanks. I need one. Cheers. <laughs> Look, uh, let's go over here. How was the inquiry? As you'd expect. I was there this morning, heard part of your evidence, then I had to leave. <sighs> You're lucky. Went on quite a bit. I heard what you said about takeoffs, that no one had any trouble except Gort. That's right. I've been thinking about that check you did on him. You did the takeoff at Ranjiban. I believe I did. Why? It was a hot night, wasn't it? And you were pretty heavy. I think we were, but what? Now, did, did you notice anything peculiar? No, why? Did you use a lot of runway? Heavy, hot, yes, of course. You, um, uh, remember that piece of hedge you brought back? Yes, what about it? It didn't come from Calcutta, it came from Ranjibad. What? There is no hedge at Calcutta. You're saying I hit the hedge on takeoff? Yes, I am. You took that piece of hedge all the way to Calcutta, tucked up in your wheel well. What are you driving at, Hugh? Just that you very nearly didn't get airborne that night. You're lucky to be here. Assuming you're right, which I don't for one now, moment... Now, just tell me one thing. Was that takeoff according to the book? Oh, yes, of course. I always well, don't you see, then? If it could happen to you, it could happen to anybody. One day, there's going to be another crash. I'm going to see Pickering. Well, you see him by all means, but... Well, personally, I think the best thing to do about this business is... to forget it. Or learn from it. Who's that? Oh, Nigel. I heard you were coming. Judd telephone. Then you know why. I know what you're going to tell me, and I think you're wrong. Then show me something. What? The report of the takeoff trials you've been doing in Khartoum. What do you know about them? I saw the file in there. It was empty. Hot weather trials, weren't they? I can't show them to you. They belong to my company. Anyway, they're highly technical. But you learnt something. Look, Hugh, I couldn't begin to explain unless you'd had a course in aerodynamics and done years of research. That may sound like a schoolmaster. What I'm trying to say is, you're a pilot, I'm a scientist. When I give you an aeroplane, you can fly it. You forget it's the result of months and years of grinding work and uncertainty. Every idea I have has to be checked and rechecked and then checked again. Do you realize how many parts there are to a phoenix? Over 48,000. I deal in facts. And you expect me to authorize changes on a theory. It's not as easy as that. But there's something wrong. I know it. Not with the aircraft, but the way we fly it. And you're worried. I know that, too. Of course I'm worried. I'm always worried, even when there are no accidents. 
And that's why you did the trials in Khartoum. You can forget Khartoum. There's no mystery about it. That was just one of a dozen tests I have to make. Look, I can't tell you this much. We're considering the possibility, the possibility, mind you, of raising the unstick speed. In certain conditions, of course. And you'll authorize the changes when the inquiry is over and it can't harm the Phoenix. That's not fair, and you know it. I must be certain. Why do you think I spent half my life in this tunnel? It could affect other things. The nose wheel, for one. There's a limit to what it can stand. I want the answer as much as you. God knows I'm working to that end. I'm sure of that, but meanwhile, right or wrong, Gort takes all the blame, and his daughter has to live with it. And I'm haunted by the fear of someone else trying to get airborne and failing because he did what I told him. I'm sorry. I suppose we all have our private nightmares. Temperature, density, altitude. Weight oh. maximum all up. Well, yeah, that's like a Turkish bath, huh, there? Full load, sir. Need a lot of runway. What? It's not all that number of passengers, is it? It's a full load of freight, sir. Gives you maximum permissible. Huh. Let's have a look at the book. The graph says 5,300 feet of runway, unstick speed 118 knots. Mr. Roberts. Sir? Unstick is exactly 118. And you call the speeds for lifting the nose wheel and for the unstick. Give me the exact readings. Okay. Right. Oxygen on. Red pumps on. Booster pumps on. Yes? Yes, all right. I'll tell them in the morning. Can I help you? Please. There we are, sir. Thank you. Phoenix Victor Extra, clear to take off. Victor Extra, Roger out. Clear to take off, sir. Clear to climb on course to Calcutta at 42,000 feet. Thanks. Okay. RPM check at 10.5 on all engines, sir. Fuel flow is okay. Engine pressures and temperatures normal. Control tower. Take off check completed, sir. All set? Yes, I have it. Thank you. Phoenix Victor Extra. Urgent. Okay, sir, I'll pass your message. Take off technique on Phoenix One aircraft to be changed forthwith. Add eight knots. I say again, add eight knots to all unstick speeds. Victor Extra, understand, add eight knots. Nose wheel to be kept on ground until just before unstick speed is reached. Message ends. Well, we'll come out. What do you know? What's all that about? Well, never mind that now. We're late. What's that give us? Add eight knots, unstick speed, one, two, six. One, two, six. Give it to me exactly. Yes, sir. Six. 
be no doubt, sir, that the original inquiry must now be reopened. I am sure we are agreed that it can only lead to the complete vindication of the late Captain Gort, for whose qualities as a pilot and as a man we can only have the greatest admiration. Thank you.